Hello, my name's George Cairns, and in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to get rid of unwanted people who've wandered into the background, or they might be deliberately photobombing your photograph. Either way, you can clone them out without removing important details, such as your foreground subject. So the first thing to do is to open an image where you want to get rid of people in the background. I'm going to use this image here. And the challenge we face is the fact that we've got some motion blur on the hand there. So to get rid of the man in the background, we have to be very careful about preserving detail in the motion blurred hand. So what I'm going to do is just choose this tool here, which is the quick selection tool. And we're going to select the girl and then create a mask to protect her from being cloned out when we clone out the unwanted people in the background. Let's click here to choose Add to Selection. Let's make sure we've got the Auto Enhance button checked. That gives us a slightly better edge to the selection. And then we'll click and spray to start to add the girl to the selection. Now, we only want to select the parts of the girl that are overlapping unwanted people. We don't need to select her hair, for example, because there's nobody in the background there. But you can see here we've got some people in the background. They've also been selected by the Quick Selection tool. So to refine that, let's click the Subtract icon in the Options bar and then click on Spray to get rid of the marching ants around the guy in the background there and around the edge here where some balloons are showing. And then let's get rid of this lady from the selection as well. Now, I don't mind the fact that this child here is overlapping my foreground child because they're playing together. But what I want to do is just get rid of this person in the background. So I need to make sure I remove her from the selection using the minus icon there. Something like that should do the trick. So we're just creating a selection of the girl to protect her from being cloned out. So that's a very rough and ready selection. Let me just get rid of that person there in the background as well. I'm just going to add the hand to the selection just because there's a foot underneath there in the background we want to get rid of. So we've created a rough and ready selection of the girl now to help isolate her and protect her from being cloned out when we remove the unwanted background objects. Now it's a very rough and ready selection at the moment, so let's click Refine Edge. And here I'm using this particular view mode, which is on white, and that enables me to see any sharp edges there or any bits of people from the background. So let's just double click to select that. And you can do things such as play with the contrast. If it's to the right there, you'll see it's very sharp. So take that to the left for a soft contrast and you can create a smooth edge and a feathered edge as well, just to help this motion blurred hand blend with the background. If there's too many background pixels clinging to the edge of a blurred area, you could try shifting the edge a little bit more. If we set that on 0%, you'll see we've got a lot more of the edge showing, so I'm just dragging that to the left there, just to tie it in around the girl a little bit more. Radius is good, click Smart Radius and drag that up to around about two, and that helps produce a more effective edge selection. For blurred areas like this, you can click here to choose the Refine Radius tool and just click and spray around there. And that should help select the soft areas around the edge there and create a mask that's going to blend them with the surrounding edges. Talking of masks, let's set this to New Layer with Layer Mask and click OK. And that creates a black mask that hides most of the surrounding area and the white parts of the mask are making this area solid. And by default, it hides the background layer, but we actually want to see that as well. So let's turn that on. And at the moment, we can't see any difference, but there is a patch on this top layer that's going to enable us to clone out the unwanted details without erasing the girl. Okay, we're now going to clone out the unwanted background people. And to do that, we're going to create a new transparent background layer by clicking at the bottom of the layers palette. And let's just drag that down between the two layers. So the clone pixels are between the patch on the top here and the background layer like so. Make sure you've got this layer selected, and then we're going to grab the Clone Stamp tool, which you can get by pressing S or clicking here and making sure you've got the Clone Stamp like so. Then what we want to do is turn on the Aligned option for the moment, and we're going to sample Current and Below. And you can see the cursor there now is quite small. I can use the right square bracket to make it larger, or I can go to the Brush Preset Picker, choose a soft brown brush tip, and then increase its size if need be and adjust its hardness. I'm going to leave it at the far left there, and then I'm just going to click up here to close that. Now, if we Alt-click near the guy's head to sample some of these background leaves, we can then move over here. You can see a little preview there. That looks about right, so click and spray to start spraying over the guy. And as soon as I let go of the mouse, you'll notice we've got some clone pixels there now on the background layer. If you can't see these pixels, you might want to pop up to this Fly Out icon and go down to Panel Options, and make sure that it's showing the layer bounds and not the entire document. And that gives you a close-up look on any pixels on a particular layer. So here's the clone pixels. We can turn them on and off. 
So we're not actually doing anything to the background layer at all. We're just hiding the unwanted guy. Let's Alt click again to sample some of these darker patches and then move over here. There's a preview and click and spray like so. Don't go too far into the right there, otherwise you might end up cloning the guy and repeating him at a different part of the picture. So little and often is the trick. Now, if I alt click and sample this bit here, I can then extend it over the guy. And the cool thing is it should go behind the girl's hand because we've got a patch on that top layer that's actually protecting the detail we want to preserve from our child. Alt click and spray again like so. If I take some of these um, leaves up here maybe, spray them over the guy and then go down a little bit and then alt click again in here and spray around the edge. We're not actually going to spray over the girl thanks to the patch on the top layer. And that's making our blurred edge a little bit sharper. Alt click again. I'm going to extend this over this person's leg, the lady with the balloons. And as I go up, you can see the top layer's patch is protecting the child's arm from being removed. Alt click again here. And let's get rid of those feet. I'm making sure that the guide is giving me a good position to stop spraying. Now I can click and spray and just extend the path over the feet like so. Now let's get rid of this lady here. Alt click position it and then click and spray just to extend over. And again, we've got a patch to stop us cloning out the girl. I'm going to extend this bit of grass as well over here, just at the edge of the tree. Something like that should do the trick. And we can even alt click to get a bit of tree here and then just extend that down to create a little bit more of the trunk. There we go. And as I add clone pixels to this layer, you can see it's building up the size of the preview. I could turn those off to show you the original details on the layer below. Or if we turn off the top layer, the patch layer, if you like, you can see the clone pixels have eaten in to the girl from the layer below. But thanks to the patch, we've got the important details on the top above the clone pixels. It might take you a while to get your head around this, but it's a really powerful way of cloning over unwanted bits while preserving the bits that you want to keep. So we can carry on now by alt clicking to get a bit of this bush here and just take that over and extend it over this lady here like so. Up to the edge we can go, spray again. Oh, there's a bit of finger there from here that's being relocated. So what I'm going to do is just click and get rid of that like so with a nice soft edge brush. So keep sampling little and often from the background there and replace unwanted people with appropriate background pixels. And the patch you've created earlier will stop any of those pixels going over the edge or the outline of your main subject. So there we have the patch layer at the top, which is protecting important details from being erased. If I turn that off, you can see we've actually lost a bit of the edge of the figure there and some of the hand. And if we turn off the clone layer, you can see the original layer below. There's the clone pixels, there's the patch, and there's a much cleaner looking shot there now. But let's have a quick look at some of the problems we might still have with the zoom tool. Let's just click and zoom in. That hand's looking a little bit too rough and ready, but the nice thing is with Photoshop CC, if you double click on the layer mask, you can open up the properties window and then go back to mask edge. And that gives you the refined mask window back up. You can then go and adjust the contrast, for example, and you can try experimenting with smooth as well, just to try and restore important missing details. We can drop the feather down a little bit and we can even adjust shift edge to bring back more of the hand details like so. So that's a brilliant thing about Refine Edge. We can use it to refine masks later on. Let's click OK to apply those changes. So we've got more of the hand detail back there now, so that's looking a little bit more convincing. Right click again and choose Fit on Screen. One last tip here, I'm just going to click to zoom in on the hand because there's a hint of balloon from the original background that we weren't able to isolate or clone over. But what I'm going to do to disguise that is go down to the bottom of the layers palette and choose hue saturation to create a new adjustment layer. I'm then going to target that color, which is the yellows. And if I take that all the way down to here, we desaturate that yellow and make it less distracting. But it's also desaturating the rest of the image. So I just want it to apply to that particular part of the picture. So I could click on the hue saturation adjustment layers mask, press command or control I to invert it and that turns the white mask black. So the mask is now stopping the adjustment layer from making any changes until we grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to white. And then if we click on the mask to target it, we can then spray over this area. So as we spray white on the mask, it's allowing that adjustment layer to apply its desaturation to the yellow channel. And that's how we hide or disguise that remaining bit of yellow balloon. Instead of the zoom tool, right click, 
back to fit on screen. And then we have our unwanted people hidden by cloned pixels while preserving the detail on the girl's lair thanks to the patch we created.